G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from Byron Bay Observatory. I get a lot of requests for astro processing videos. You guys want to see how I process my images. And that is literally like half the work. And you probably have this little nagging voice in your head which says, are you getting the most out of that data? I bet Adam Block do a better job than that. All that money you spent and your stars look like shit. Kill the Prime Minister of Malaysia. If you can literally hear those voices, you may need medication and should see a doctor. And you should probably stay away from organized religion. But if it's just a nagging feeling that you have, then you're probably right. Astro photo processing is like most of the work. Acquisition and collecting the data from your telescope is a lot of work. I'll give you that. But actually processing the data, these days it takes me longer to process the data than it does to actually capture the data. And knowing how to process well makes a huge, huge difference on the results that you get. Now I could do a processing video. And then click on apply automatic histogram transformation. And now we wait. No. Boring. There are people who do this better than me and are better processors and they'll do it better than I ever will. So I'm not going to do that. However, today I'm going to show you one cool trick. It's the inverted layer mask. Now masking is something that you need to have a grip on in general, not just for astrophotography, but for all kinds of photographic process. And it's a trick that I use for all sorts of different reasons. So it's not just for one thing. So stick with me. I'll show you this one cool trick. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Here's an image I just finished of NGC 3576, the Statue of Liberty Nebula. It took about five hours, but more data would have been ideal. It's a 4753% blend of HOO, hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen, and RGB data and 100% RGB for the stars themselves, which meant I had to get five filters worth but I think it was worth it in the end. Ironically, New Yorkers can't see this nebula. It's near Carina in the Southern Celestial Hemisphere. But you know what is about one hour from the actual Statue of Liberty? High Point Scientific. High Point Scientific are American astronomy vendor uh, that are in New Jersey. Forget about it. I'm walking here. I don't know, pizza. Look, they know more about astronomy than I know about New York. They have a price match guarantee and they fully support the products they sell. You can buy anything that I use in my videos to take my pictures with the links down below in the description. So if you just want to copy me and set up a rig exactly the same and get the same results that I do, use the links down below. High Point Scientific, www.highpointscientific.com. All right. Now, what is a mask? You've probably heard that term before, so let me just explain it real quick before I jump into the inverted mask. Uh, a mask is something that is fundamental to Photoshop. In Photoshop, you can have layers, and those layers can apply effects to the layers below them, or you can layer different things. But it's something that the developers of PixInsight seem to have an ideological aversion to. They just don't want to implement layers. Now, I love PixInsight. However, I do love using layers, uh, particularly because it means I don't have to apply effects destructively to any, any of my work. So I'll apply them as a layer, and then I can mask that to control how much the effect is applied to the layer below. Let me illustrate this for you so it's real easy. Here is an effect. This effect is applied to everything. Now, what if I just wanted to apply that effect to a smaller part, like this? That is a mask. Or at least the mask, you can't see, it's hidden. It actually looks like this. Now you can see here that where the black area is, that blocks the effect from coming through. And where the white area is, that lets the effect come through, like this. And what's even cooler about this is you don't have to use just black and white. You can use shades of gray, so you can just let a little bit of the effect through, like this. Cool, huh? You can even have a gradient, so you can go from applied fully to applied not at all with a really smooth gradient, like this. Was that the best damn explanation of masking you've ever heard? If it is, I don't want you to just smash that like and subscribe button. Nuke it from orbit. 
So how do we use this for astrophotography? Let me show you a demo. All right, are you ready to learn some stuff? This is the RGB stack, it's not really processed. So the first thing I would normally do is add an adjustment layer for levels because I want to make the dark darker and the bright brighter and pull everything in on the histogram here. Really give it some pop, right? So I'm just going to do this really extreme so you can see what I mean. I'm blowing out the core here of the Statue of Liberty. Now what's happened is that when I turn this level adjustment on and off, these stars are way more bloated than they used to be. And I don't want the stars to bloat as much. So this is where the inverse layer mask will help. Now if I hold down, I think it's the command key and click on the layer, you can actually see the mask itself. So I can, I can draw a mask in here if I want. If I switch that mask on and off, you can see now it's not affecting that middle region where I've drawn the mask. So let's clear this mask out. I will select all and delete. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually copy, I'm gonna select all and copy this bottom layer. I'm gonna command click into the adjustment layer mask here. I'm going to control V to paste in and you can see we have a black and white version because the, the mask is a black and white mask. And as I said before, we want to block things from the black. So this is where inverting the mask helps. Now what this will do in theory is it will block all these black areas, which is the stars that I don't want to be bloated. So before I apply this, I want that white to be a bit wider. So I'm going to apply levels directly destructively to this layer mask. I'm going to pull up the white so that it gets wider. I'm going to pull the black so that we got so that I can bloat these stars a bit. And that mask looks good. So if I command click the mask now, now you can see when I turn the mask on and off, it ha the stars still have a little bit of bloat here. So I could probably make that mask a little stronger. There we go. Now if I turn the mask on and off, Okay, so the stars aren't bloating nearly as much as they used to. So that's one example, but there's so many times when you want to apply things separately from the background layer to the foreground layer. Uh, let's say we want to uh, cheat with topaz. This is very noisy he in here, particularly in the dark areas. I'm going to apply some topaz denoise here. Um, now topaz is notorious for messing up the stars. Uh, let's turn sharpening off completely. It's uh, it's really destructive. And I want to apply, I really want these dark areas to be smooth. That looks buttery smooth. So I'm gonna turn this slider down, this reduced noise slider until the bare minimum. Now Topaz does some really funky stuff to the stars. I just don't like what it does. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna borrow this layer mask that we created for this one, this inverted layer mask. So I'm just gonna copy this mask. Control A, Control C, go into here, add a mask, command click, and I'm just going to paste this mask straight in. Now if we turn this one on and off, you can see I'm not letting Topaz affect the stars at all. And actually, it's letting a little bit of noise through. If I command click on the layer here, you can see that this white area isn't completely white as well. So it actually has the benefit of letting a little bit of noise through so it doesn't look unnatural which is what topaz tends to do uh, so if i view this now you can see this noise profile looks actually a lot more natural and when you zoom out everything looks buttery smooth still but with a very natural looking noise profile so that's a way you can use topaz without affecting the integrity so much of your structures and your stars just use it as a noise reduction tool and just apply it selectively. It's another example of how the inverted layer mask can help you here. What else can we do? Let's say we want to uh, get an A-pod and increase the saturation. So I'm going to go layer, new adjustment, layer and hue saturation. This is not how you should increase the saturation. You should use um, selective color for a more natural high dynamic range color saturation. But again, for an extreme example, uh, let's make this A-pod worthy. This is great, but the stars get kooky. Look, look at all these red stars. The red giants here are looking like absolute blood dots. Again, use our inverted layer mask. Let's steal this one from here. So I'm gonna command click, control A, control C to copy, and into our hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm gonna paste that inverted layer mask in there. I'm gonna go to levels, 
Control L and make this a lot darker around the stars. There we go. There we go. It's not affecting the star saturation so much. So usually when I would process uh, an astro photo, I would separate the background layer from the star layer using StarNet, recombine them in Photoshop so I can affect these two layers differently anyway. But if you are working with a color image or you don't want to go through the process of separating the stars, using this inverted layer mask can let you affect the background of the stars completely separately and it's really easy to do because every star is going to be a bright point. So when we invert them for the layer mask, they become dark points and that, that creates a beautiful mask for us. You can do this in PixInsight as well. So if you go through the long laborious process of creating a star mask in PixInsight, you can then invert the mask here and it will protect the stars itself. Or you could tick this invert box during the star mask itself and that will also just create the mask inverted in the first place. But again, we're applying effects destructively here. And that's why I like working in Photoshop layers at this point so that I can treat every step non-destructively. I can play with the sliders, I can tweak things and see how it goes. And it's just quicker that way too. Anyway, that is a full summary of the inverted layout mask. Hopefully this helps your astrophotography processing and uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Sorry it took so long. I hate it when videos do that to me. I just want to know the actual steps. If you've sat through all of me rambling, thank you very much for uh, spending some time with me. That's about it. Thanks for watching Star Stuff. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and remember everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.